Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Rodcast. Great to be chatting with you, Pastor Rod. And today we've got another exciting episode. We're going to talk about uh, this great concept of awakening and how God is awakening hearts. And so you've recently been teaching on this and it's just been so awesome, Pastor Rod. And so, yeah, just would you maybe just define what is awakening? Uh, Awakenings are things that we read in the Bible where people just... Get get alive to what God is saying or doing in their life. All of a sudden, just suddenly, there's a God moment. It could be a non-Christian, could be a backslider, could be a a believer. But there's just this moment where there's God speaks, God draws, God does something, and there's, there's a visible change mm. in people's lives. And I'm very excited by this concept because we've lived most of our life in um, not yet believers sort of cultures, mm. um, and we've loved it. And yeah. we've seen this happen where someone was not open and then all of a sudden they were open. They were, And so this this is awakenings. And I think it's something that's mm. happening in every country and mm. every neighborhood. Yeah. I believe God is touching, God is drawing, and we can be encouraged by this, mm. especially if we've been fruitless for a while in some of our evangelism or, or mm. whatever we do, that God could really just do something suddenly. I, It's an expectation and then a... Yeah, seeing these things really encourage our hearts, doesn't it? Yeah, it's so awesome. And do you, do you feel like there are seasons where there are where where there's greater awakenings and seasons where they are less, or is is God always doing this in the world? I just I think everybody has moments mm. where God touches and draws, and yeah. a lot of people are not aware of it, especially if there's no knowledge of the gospel. They don't know what to do with that. Yeah. And they could even go into other pursuits, you know, spiritual mm. pursuits. But I, I think it's happening. I, you know, I'd love to believe that it, God would touch everybody mm. at some time yeah. and draw them. And mm. But in sometimes you see more. Mm. And um, it's really exciting. You know, people would call that, maybe they'd call that revival or they'd call it a move yeah. of God, what, whatever you want to call it. But what I'm describing is a change in mm. the heart, yeah. the, the actual um, – you could see it, you could feel it, you can talk to them, something happened, and you can even yeah. ask what happened. And mm. yes, yeah, so I think it's happening everywhere in every in every nation and every yeah. part of history because mm. that's my belief that God is good. It says, you know, yeah. God is not slow regarding his promises to Peter or whatever. Um, <laughs> he's not slow in keeping his promises, mm. but he wants all to come to a knowledge of the truth. There is a desire in, in, in God mm. and the Holy yeah. Spirit power here on the earth to speak to people yeah, yeah. and to draw people. And I really believe that. That mm. is that is God's intention. What, what, yeah. you know, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he sent mm. his son, not for a select few, but mm. for God so loved the world that whoever mm. believes, in other words, you've got to hear something and believe in it, will not die but have everlasting life. And mm. um, so I, I, I would believe that these awakenings happen to everybody at some point. Yeah. And living again in, in Japan for 21 years, mm. we've seen this over and over again where yeah. where people said, you know, people are not open. And then we've seen people open. Yeah. Um, it's been an absolute joy, an absolute, pro- probably the reason why we, we stayed in the yeah. early days and the reason why we're staying now is to encourage the sharing of good news because there's people out there in Japan today that are awakening, that are open, that yeah. all of a sudden something shifted. We we want to be there at that point to mm. meet them. And, of sure. course, it's not just us, but every yeah. great believer can be a part of that. Sure. And I just want to pick up on that point a little bit more. Like you said, we need to be there to meet them. And so with this concept of awakening, we obviously know that God is drawing hearts. God is doing the the big work in people. He's the one that really wants people. And but how how is it why is it important that we as followers of Jesus recognize this what God's doing in other people's lives and uh, as part of our mission well i th- i think that um when you see someone change then you realize it can happen again and again and again so we need to be we need to be awakened to the awakening we need to be aware yeah. And then when you see it, you just think that could happen again and again and again. Mm. And and when it doesn't, it doesn't. But when it does, it does. And yeah, one of the things we've discovered in Japan is that the the number of people responding is directly correlated to the number of people that we meet. Mm. 
So if we meet one person, there's only so much chance that they're going to be ready. But if we meet 10 or 100 mm. or 1,000, um, the, the percentage of those who are open and tell their story. Like, like they'll tell stories of things like, you know, I, I went to bed at night um, bored and I wake up in the morning wondering if there's a God. Like there's, mm. there's, you hear these stories all the time. It's, uh, yeah. Or someone – you know, they, these are real stories. Or someone saying, you know, I, I met I met your team eight years ago at a university and I mm. didn't give it much thought, but now I'm older and I, I thought you were the most genuine, fun people I'd ever met. I want to reconnect. So what yeah. happened? And mm. I'm sure there's a lot of backstory. I'm, yeah. I'm sure there's – one day we'll hear the backstory. Yeah. But when you hear the testimony, it sounds quite, wow, mm. like yeah. something happened and it's happened pretty fast here. Yeah. Uh, it might have been a process, but the last – part was fast yeah. and so as we meet more and more people we're hearing more of these stories wow. of japanese and foreigners living in japan saying um you know i just I, I one girl recently from another country just just said to her flatmate um i've never been to church in my life this is from a different country um i've never been to church but i, I would like to visit a church do you know any churches and her flatmate was a christian Mm. And they Googled here in Tokyo and found our church came and, and she made a commitment to Jesus. Mm. So good. what on earth happened to yeah. that girl? And that's the yeah. exciting part that God is touching lives. Now, we could have mm. some Bible verses to back this up, which might be useful, actually, Adrian. I, mm. yeah. Can I share a couple of verses? Yeah, please do. Um, you know, Jesus, Jesus verses are awesome, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, um and he says in John 6, uh, Jesus talks a lot about people leaving him and people who stayed with him. Mm. John six forty four it says, no one can come to me. This is Jesus speaking. No one can come yeah. to me unless the Father who sends me draws them, and mm. I will raise them up at the last day. This is a very powerful scripture to me. When I read this as a brand new baby Christian, I thought, I, I know that. Yeah. I, I, I recognize that in my story. I reckon mm. I know that was true. I was drawn. All of a sudden, there was a drawing. Mm. And you're from a Christian background, but there was a time that you say I was drawn. There was something yeah. just like God turned the, the the volume up. You know the the yeah. drawing volume, boom, and yeah. and there was. Now that doesn't mean I had to become a believer. Mm. That means all of a sudden I was aware of certain new things, and and so we're seeing that over and over here in Japan and other countries that we are mm. are working with. Um, this concept that God does awaken people and we don't know where, we don't know who. We, when sure. we meet people, when we meet a lot of people, we don't know which ones will respond. Sure. We have no idea. Mm. And I don't believe God will ever tell us that one over there, go to that one, although he'll, he'll, he'll lead us to speak to people for sure. Mm. Yeah. But he won't tell us the future. He won't yeah. tell us who it is. Mm. Um. And, you know, we, we read in the Bible many times that people, when people came to faith, it was usually pretty fast. Mm. Um, and even the Apostle Paul, who was called Saul back then, he was anti-Jesus. Yeah. He was the most anti-Jesus person of his generation. And mm. he met Jesus on a road and he changed in a moment, which is a great story we could talk about. But yeah. that can happen. Yeah. And I've heard about this in certain cultures where there is anti-Jesus or Maybe that's too harsh, not anti-Jesus, but anti-Christian, mm. anti-something. Um, yeah. um, and then there is an actual encounter with mm. God's word, God's presence, a believer. Um, um, I've even heard of people on a spiritual pr pilgrimage to another faith. And, mm. and, and all of a sudden on that pilgrimage to their faith's center or whatever it is, there is an encounter yeah. of wanting to know who Jesus is. Sure. I, I, these are not stories in the fives and the tens. These are hundreds and thousands of yeah. stories. Wow. Um, in fact, I've been in some cultures that could not physically become believers in Jesus openly yeah. because they would have been killed. Mm -hmm. But they said to me, if I could, I would become a believer right now. Like, yeah. And I said, well, I, let me pray for you. And I didn't ask them to become a Christian but I asked them, would you like to know Jesus? Wow. And and people in all sorts of situations said yes. And because yeah. um, I've seen this so much, mm. um, I just know it can happen in any culture. Yeah. Even people who are far from God can have a moment. Yeah. 
Yeah. So that motivates me in sharing good news yeah. and wanting our church to share good news. And sure, um, That's so and good. here in Japan, we've now seen thousands of Japanese giving their lives to Jesus. Pretty amazing. So good, so good, and yeah. And I think what I'm what I'm inspired by um, you and Pastor Verve and just the way that you've lived is that you, which you encourage us as as leaders on your team, is to. I want you to believe in this concept of awakening. And I think you've always lived with that. You've lived with that concept of God is awakening. And and mm. because you believe that, you have your eyes open. It's kind of like yeah. you're looking. You're always looking to see where mm. God is working. And I think that's such a great encouragement for us as as followers of Jesus on mission to say that we. F- it starts with that belief that God is moving. Yeah. I just need to see where he's moving. Uh, and so... Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of your experience, I know you've been doing this for many years. Like what what are some factors or experiences that you've seen that have contributed or led people to these awakenings? Like you've mentioned dreams or visions or sudden yeah. interest in the Bible, even sometimes trauma. What are yeah. some of these things? Yeah. All of those things. Um, you know, when I was young, I read a book about cross-cultural sharing the gospel and it's it had in there a little part on factors that make people more open to the gospel and and Mm. like was it one to ten where ten was you know death of a loved one or Mm. um very bad sickness or you know like like people people think about life in those situations um Mm. people dying people experiencing a tragedy or uh Mm. experiencing a um an accident or, or something mm. that there that, that's like 10 and then there's like maybe five i, I can't remember okay but maybe a yeah. five's like moving house or yeah. moving country or getting a new job or mm. it and then one might be just these unknown factors of just curiosity or mm. um chance reading of a scripture um mm. uh, or chance talking with someone that spoke some sense and you thought about it or Mm. Even a movie, you know, when I first, my first inkling of wanting to know God, I, I, I talk a lot about my being a fireman story, but yeah. there was one incident before that, or actually two connected. And then I got saved in 1979. In 1977, Star Wars came out. It was obviously <laughs> groundbreaking, huge. <Yeah. laughs> but as I watched it and loved it, um, I realized I was on the dark side of the force. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the dark side. I had, the, I, uh, I had this revelation that I wasn't good and I wasn't got doing good and mm. the dark side of the force seemed to have more power, but it had no friendship. Mm. And as I looked at Luke Skywalker and the good side, they seemed to have less power, but this amazing fellowship and friendship and love mm. and goodness and fun, right? The, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and it was sort of – that was really – I think that was probably the first thought mm. that I was on the wrong side. Mm. And then I read um, the Lord of the Rings book back then, a thousand pages. Um, mm. I love the movie, but the book um, – and I had the same experience of um, Sauron and all these you know, orcs had power, but they had no love. Mm. And the, the Frodo and his little buddies – didn't have much power, but they had friendship. So this is a strange thing, but I think these are the things, like movies or a mm. talk with a friend who actually showed grace or love or – Yeah. Um, and then, I, you know, I, in, in 1979, I actually was in, involved in a big fire. As, I was a fireman mm. and I was protected. That's another story. But the, there was something going on mm. and I was still on the dark side of the force mm. and I wasn't actively finding Jesus – Mm. But that fire was like the next stage. So pro- probably our lives are like jigsaw puzzles, right? That's like mm. pieces. Yeah. And so because I had that experience, I can believe this so much in mm. other people. I think yeah. if God reached out to me, as, as that scripture said, no one can come unless the Father draws him. And I look at those mm. funny moments and I think, well, there was definitely a drawing, an yeah. awakening, a shifting, mm. a curiosity. Mm. It wasn't fully b- born. It wasn't fully developed, but it was there. Mm. Then we must be meeting people everywhere, somewhere on that journey. Sure. Somewhere on that awakening journey. Sometimes yeah. they're at the very beginning and we sowed the seed. Mm. Like one of our pastors, uh, Noboru, a great man of God, mm. um, said as a boy, he was put in a, a Christian kindergarten in, mm. t- in Japan and he had – cannot remember them even mentioning the word Jesus, 
but he remembers they were kind mm. and they were Christians. So as a young adult in America, he was exposed, he was open, and then he came back and heard in our church the gospel and, and responded. But isn't that interesting? He said there was a, there was a seed. So sure. I really want to encourage everyone sowing seeds with kids, yeah. um, universities, wherever you are, and people don't mm. seem to be responding. No, no, you are part of this journey. Mm. Uh, and God can yeah. use anything. This seed just, just springs up and yeah. is, is, is life. So because I've had this experience, I totally believe it can happen to anybody at any time. Yeah. Now, obviously it doesn't mm-hmm. because otherwise we'd see a lot more. Yeah. But it is happening. Yeah. It is happening. And that's yeah. why I want to encourage you, Adrian and Catherine and, and others to say, even if we haven't seen it for a while, Tomorrow, mm. this week could be another yeah. day. We 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 Very could. Good. So living on that edge, expectation, mm. yeah. living on the edge of truth. The scripture says, yeah. the Father is drawing people. Sure. Um, and so I think good. as also as we lift up the name of Jesus, there's going to be more because Jesus said this as well. He said, um, John twelve thirty two, when I am lifted up from the earth, which obviously means his crucifixion, mm. I will draw all people to myself. What a promise is that. Yeah. I will draw all people. Hmm. This speaks to me of fairness. It speaks mm. to me of the love of God for all people. It speaks to me about the 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 heart of you know for mm. God so loved the world. Yeah. Now you still got to believe in Jesus, yeah. but the opportunity to sure. be drawn, I believe, is right there. As we lift up yeah. the name of Jesus everywhere yeah. in the world, there is a chance yeah. for people to go, oh, that's good news. Yeah. Which is what it should be. Yeah. So yeah, I, I want to live in that in that space that's and. Cool. I've lived this life for 43 years and yeah. I'm looking forward to many meeting many, many more people who are awakened and then believe in Jesus. Oh, it's so good. And it's, it's just an exciting way to live with this anticipation of what's God going to do today? What's God going to do tomorrow? And um, and just knowing that he is at work in an incredible way. He loves people and he wants people to to come into salvation. And I heard a great story uh, this week. I chatted with a guy from, uh, he's here in Japan, but he's from another nation in Southeast Asia. And he he came to study his master's here in Japan. And he had been, he came from a different faith and his family's quite strong in that faith. And he, after like nine months of being in Japan, he felt just depressed. And he was like, he's got like, what's he started asking those questions. Like, what is the purpose of life? Like I'm doing all these studies and, but like, what's, what's, what, what is the purpose? I'm just going to live life and then die. And then what's next kind of thing. So he was asking oh. these questions. And so a friend flew over uh, and they met in Tokyo and he, his friend, they started discussing these questions and his friend was like, well, I found this book once. Uh, it's called The Purpose Driven Life. You should read it. So he gave his friend this book. The guy read the book. And then like, basically, he read the whole book and he was like, I want to become a Christian because this is this is like, there's faith here. There's excitement. There's vision. There's purpose. There's hope. And then he basically went back. Uh, he now lives in Sendai and he l- typed in church and he found our church there and became a follower of Jesus, baptized. And yeah. he just said, I've been following Jesus now for nine months and I'm so mm. full of joy and hope. Mm. And, and there's just, there's this exciting thing that's happening in his life. And it's that very thing. There was this curiosity, like asking questions that awakening and it just yeah. brought life and purpose. So yeah. <laughs> it's exciting. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people, you know, I, depression has a lot of sources, but mm. lack of purpose is one of them. Mm. Long-term lack of purpose, one of many. And I think that that also leads us to search. Mm. And, you know, it, in my story, um, when I was a fireman and a big fire, I was protected by an unknown God. I didn't know God. Mm. My two friends who were Christians at that time, I, I, I didn't have many friends as Christians through the years, but that at that time I did. And they said, Rod, um, this God is is Jesus. And I, would you like to read the Bible? And I said, no, actually. Um and they said to me this, they, 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 my two friends, they said, Rod, if we, you're on a search now. I said, yes. They said, if we give you any spiritual book in the world of any religion or whatever, would you read it? I said, yeah, probably. And they said, well, why wouldn't you read this one about Jesus? And I thought, good challenge. And I started to read. So thank God that I, yeah. what, what a, what a common, common sense thing to say to me. Yeah. We were friends. <laughs> we were talking. I was now on a journey. I was seeking, hey, why don't you check Jesus out? 
Yeah. And, um, you know, there's a scripture in Psalms that says, taste and see the Lord is good. I think it's Psalm 31. Mm. And um, taste and see. This taste, taste mm. the word. And this is yeah. what I, I, you know, here in Japan, we don't force Jesus on anybody. We say, mm. taste and see the Lord is good and mm. taste to see his word is good. Yeah. And so I think that, you know, with, with your, your story there with that young man from, from Southeast Asia, I met him recently as well for the first mm. time. Great mm. young guy. Mm. Mm-hmm. Wants to translate in, things into his language for Jesus and yeah. has read through, I think, the whole Bible and in a few months or most of it and, and yeah. just passionate. And I heard the same story. He was depressed, yeah, which is where we, we sort of started this little part. Mm. But his depression led to search and then his friend mm. was there. And, yeah. and you just look at these stories and you think the pieces have to come together. Yeah. And again, that's why that we want to meet people yeah. and meet h- hundreds and thousands of people in Japan mm-hmm. because they've just never heard. And some yeah. of them, and actually many of them, would love to know about Jesus. Yeah. They would love to see a church mm. that's full of love and forgiveness. They would they would mm. love that. I, I, I often say, you've probably heard me, if everyone in Japan had a chance to see our church like close mm-hmm. up, yeah, I think we'd see millions get saved. Yeah, that's a big statement, right? So I, I really do. I think if people yeah. had a fair chance to yeah. see Jesus close up, there'd be millions that would be responding sure. today mm. because they're awakened, awakening. Yeah, will awaken. Whatever you want to say, there yeah. is a drawing, and then there's the the meeting. Yeah, sure. It's exciting, eh? It's so good and. And I've been, I personally, my personal Bible reading right now is in John. And in John, like the first few chapters, that there's this word so often that says, Come and see. Come and see. Like right. Jesus says to his, the, uh, jo- uh, two of John's disciples, Come and they're like, Where are you staying? And he's like, Come and see. And they go and spend some time. And then uh, I think it's Andrew. He's like, He runs back. He says to Peter, He's like, come and like we found the messiah and he's like come and see and then the other guy goes to his friend nathaniel philip goes to nathaniel and he's like what good can come from nazareth and he's like come and see come and see it's like this this Mm. like it's a this invitation just come and see come and taste Mm. come and see and i think it's such a big part of i think a lot of what we do in a lot of our outreach is just meeting people and say hey Mm. come and see just come and be a part of the community come and taste come and experience something which is so good so wow that's that's really great yeah, yeah. So. and and, and as, as we read there before jesus wants everyone to have mm. this chance yeah that's so, so good. i'm looking forward to seeing more people <laughs> in japan and other countries yeah. sharing come and yeah. see with come and see. <laughs> with their friends as well wow that's so great and so i would love it if you could just maybe expand on this more i uh, so God is moving. There's awakenings. What can we do as followers of Jesus? Like meeting people and uh, like what what do we share with them? Uh, like do we just listen? Do we share? Like invite, pray for them? Like what, what are some practical things that we can do to partner with God in this great awakening in people? When Jesus first uh, is mentioned in Mark, the gospel of Mark, and he's baptized by John the Baptist, mm-hmm. who's actually his cousin, believe it or not, um, mm-hmm. And uh, it says that his message was, hear the good news and repent. Mm. And repent means change your thinking. Yeah. And I love that because people need to hear the good news of God. Mm. That God is good. Yeah. And yes, there are some elements of, of God that we don't understand and his, his judgments are coming and all that for sure. Mm. Yeah. But the first thing is there's got to be good news. Like, mm. can God help me? Can God um, heal me? Can God mm. bring me friendships and... That these, this is good news. And yeah. I think on the edge of the good news is our own testimony about the good news. So yeah. I think we need to be empowered by our own stories mm. of why did I seek Jesus? What was the good news that I responded to? Because you'll, you'll share that story hopefully with passion mm. and genuineness. And someone says, why do you go to church or why do you believe in Jesus? And you can say, well, can I tell you my story? And mm. most people will go, well, okay, as long as it's short, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> um, and I say, well, you know, I was, so for my story, I wouldn't say I was on the dark side of the force with someone. That's pretty, that's pretty mystical. But I would say um, I was, I was depressed as a, mm-hmm. as a teenager and I had a lot of anger about uh, my father leaving when I was eight. Mm. And um, I had to work very, very hard because you had, didn't have much money and, uh, I, I worked from the age of eight onwards doing, you know, 
delivering newspapers. We had them back then, and um, <laughs> and milk and orange juice and that. So and that was that wasn't a bad thing, but the bad thing was that I was so angry and um, mm. I, I didn't know what to do with that. So I was depressed and I was angry and I didn't know it. And and so when I heard the good news that there was a God who loved me and had protected me in the fire, mm. it it is my testimony that I will say to people: I, I'm sure that you were protected by God. Mm. Even though you didn't know him, I'm sure there were times, and most people, most people will say, "Actually, I remember this happened in my life," and yeah. I'm able to say, "Well, that was God, mm. that was your Creator. He yeah. saved you, or He helped you, or He protected you." It's a big part of my story mm. because it's my story, and yeah. I think that we all need to think through the good news in our own life and mm. make it make sense to someone else. And I talk to a lot of people who are. Like, like yourself from a great Christian family and they say, I don't have a testimony. And I say, yes, you do. You mm-hmm. do. You just got to reflect on the good news. What was it yeah. that actually changed your heart? And mm-hmm. some people will say things like, well, I, was, um, I didn't have many friends and, and then I found great friendships. Mm. And I rejoice at all those stories. Like these are not to be put aside. These are, these, this is the center of the good news. This is what mm. Jesus did. Mm. You know, when... When um, John the Baptist is in prison and he says to his disciples, "Is Jesus the one?" and Jesus sends back and says, "You know, people are healed. Yeah. You know, people are set free." So, so to me, this is the testimony. Yeah. What did Jesus do? Mm. And it could be a simple healing, a protection, a relationship. Um, sure. I use the word healing a lot because I think people need a lot of healing, mm. um, especially in today's age when with sexual promiscuity, there's a lot of healing needed. Yeah. Soul. soul and mind healing mm. in order to have great relationships. So mm. the good news is Jesus heals, mm. Jesus delivers, Jesus sets free. Jesus can break off the the past broken thinking. Mm. And and this is my testimony. And I think this is what we must do, Adrian. We must think yeah. deeply yeah. on the good news in our own life. Sure. And that is powerful. Mm. That's so good. So, yeah, just being... And I think that's one thing we, we love to encourage people is learn to tell your story in three minutes. Like the, yeah. what were you like before Jesus? What was it like when you met Jesus? And what's it like after you've met Jesus? We have a, even a great short teaching in our blue book uh, study, yeah. just teaching people how to get ready to tell their story in a quick, mm. short way uh, that really is going to glorify and honor Jesus in that. So, so good. Awesome. Well, it's been so great to chat about yeah. this awakening. It's so excited, exciting to be alive. God is working. And yeah, just so good to be a part of this great mission with Jesus. So, beloved, if you if you have any final thoughts you want to share, or you can just pray for everyone that we can be on this mission with Jesus. I just a quick summary. Everybody has a moment with God and mm-hmm. and, and and let's be open for that. Let's be ready to share good news. Yeah. Share simply share our story. And secondly, lastly, I think you would, everyone needs to reflect on this goodness of God. Yeah. So people say, why did you go to church? It, it can't be, oh, you know, my wife brings me or something like that. <laughs> it, it's got to be personal and yeah. I, I get refreshment. I feel better. I feel less yeah. stressed. Like th- what does God done for you? Because mm. the more of us who are aware of this, the more we're going to share, the more we're going to be confident and the more people will come to Jesus. So I'd love to pray for that. Awesome. Here we go. Lord, I pray that we'd be awakening in our hearts to the awakening. Mm. There'd be an understanding that you are good. You do good things in us and for other people and that we simply share good news when people are awakened. I pray for people to know you, love you, follow you, and I pray for your word in our hearts to be rich and strong, awakening us every day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Thank you, Pastor Rod, and thank you, everybody. I hope you uh, enjoyed that episode. Thank you so much for joining us today. And if you enjoyed today's episode with Pastor Rod, why don't you subscribe on whatever platform you are listening to this and we'll see you next time.